Have Northwest weather. It's wet, it's raining, it's windy, it's gray, and the Ducks are in town to take on the dogs. Seems appropriate, doesn't it? Of the Ducks, Todd McKim. And Todd, you've got a team with a lot of momentum right now. A big victory last week, Don, against Arizona State, a game they needed Coach to Rich Brooks now in his 17th year. This is actually his 125th conference game as the head coach at Oregon, just a year behind Terry Donahue as far as the dean of the Pac-10. And the youngster, <laughs> even though he's been a coach in the Pac-10 longer than anybody else in 20-some years, in his first year as the head man, Jim Lamb, right now, with that 4-2 and two record that we talked about. The series, it goes way back. This is the 87th time the Ducks and Huskies have gotten together. Rich Brooks against the University of Washington and the last win a lot of us remember back in 1980 34 to 10 Washington won the toss but they deferred so Oregon has chosen to receive here we go ball being held by a Husky it'll be whittled back in his own end zone got to go now fumble it out into the playing field and is up to the 14 and a flag goes down immediately had some good luck with those Oregon slapped with a holding. Now had the best six-game period than anybody's ever had. He's thrown for 1,800 yards, 300 a game. That's pretty impressive numbers, but uh, he hasn't faced the, the kind of defense he's going to face today yet. First and ten. Ball on the seven-yard line as we get things going. They're going into the wind now, keep in mind. Pass immediately is complete out to number six, Kristen Mecklemore. Let's look at the starters for the Ducks as they come into Seattle. Of course, Danny O'Neill is in there at the starter with those 14 TDs and only six interceptions and 1,800 yards. Burwell, one of the leaders in the Pac-10 in rushing, as Malapai will play fullback. Ricketts, Mecklemore, and Willie Tate. And up front, Steve Harden out of nearby Snohomish. Heath Howington, Tom Curran, and Afonso Stark, rest of the folks up front. And they have developed very well. They've come along under Rich Brooks' guidance extremely well, that offensive line. Second down and one. Good pressure. Interception. Lawyer Malloy in his first career start. Flag goes down as he is tackled on the 15-yard line. But the pressure on O'Neal. Interesting call. Second down and short. Oregon thought the Huskies would play run defense. Oregon decided to throw the football. And they end up with the interception. And, and look what Jim Lambright had on on defense. He had the he had the blitz coming, uh, both inside linebackers. And uh, uh, Rich Brooks is telling uh, Washington they're going to throw the ball regardless of the weather. And Jim said we're going to rush regardless of the coverage. I would imagine the number one responsibility for Washington's front the seven this week is put heat on O'Neill. Oregon has not been able to run the ball consistently. Here the official explaining one of the two flags or both of the two flags, both personal foul penalties on the Huskies. Field position very good originally, and then you march off 30 yards worth of penalties. Oh, yeah, back to the 50-yard line. Yeah. One penalty was a dead ball foul. DeMarco Farr getting into it with Danny O'Neill and an Oregon offensive lineman trying to protect Danny O'Neill well after the play is over. You get an interception, run it back inside the 20, and now you got a first down on your own or on the 50. Once again, opportunities gone by. First and ten with two receivers to the left. It's going to be Kaufman trying to get to the outside. And Oregon knows this offense as well as anybody. No gain to speak of at all. One of the leaders getting in there, Alex Molden, number one, a cornerback. And Damon Ewart starting at quarterback with that padded flock jacket around him. This season, around 1,100 yards. Joe Krolik to start. Been a quiet year for Joe so far. Janowski not starting. Actually, Theron Hill with Mark Bruner at tight end. And then Pearson, Peterson, Patrick Kessie getting his first start. He's going to be one of the main men next year and in the future. So some good experience for the young man now on second down and 11. Two to the, to the left, one to the right, and goes to Hill in his first start as it is complete to the 46-yard line. As you see Gary Williams, he's actually here despite the angle injury. Malapai and Romeo Bamison, he's also banged up with a sore shoulder. The rest of the linebackers, Ernest Jones, very good, has a number of sacks and TFLs. Dante Lewis back there and Coda, the Pac-10 player of the week last week for his efforts against Arizona State. Third down and five. To the outside, intended for Bruner and nearly picked off by Coda. 
who already has four interceptions, second in the back ten. This is what the pre-pressure look does to the quarterback. Uh, Damon thought he was going to get a blitz. He checked off, kept everybody in. You can see all his protection, and it's only a four-man rush. So, uh, and again, pretty good coverage out there by Chad Cote on your interception. Wardell back to punt. Now fifth in net punting are the Huskies. And it'll go into the end zone. As Oregon will again start with two receivers to the right, one to the left. They'll keep it on the ground with Burwell. Pretty good first down yardage up to the 24 yard. Defensively for the Dogs, as you see Mr. Butler in there as well. Fontaine with the pressure on O'Neill earlier. Trevor Highfield at the nose tackle and DeMarco Farr. And the linebackers, Devers, his first start along with Richie Chambers out of Lake Stevens. Springstead and Hillary Butler, the anchor. Lawyer Malloy, his first start now at free safety. Lewis Jones, those two. Really playing well as well as their backups, the more Lions and and uh, David Kilpatrick. Ball is still complete to Deadweiler. First down up to the 40, gets away from Lawyer Malloy. Finally down at the 47 yard line. Now back to his feet, but may have taken a shot. Well, you're right. He's taken two shots already. Four offensive plays for Oregon, and Danny O'Neill's taken two big shots. He can't do that every other play. Lewis Jones off the uh, backside, and uh, uh, he was throwing out to another receiver. Uh, Oregon got a uh, break there, and that's just a, tor a terrible call. I agree with that, you. That's one of the worst I've ever seen. I, he, I he can't, just I can't believe that, that, that you could call Lewis Jones. Oh, that's what they got him for, the extra little bit to yeah. maybe spin him around. But well, the, the initial contact, there was nothing wrong with I, I still can't believe it. When you're, you've got a quarterback wrapped up. There's no rule that says you can't take him down. When you're when you have made contact and you've got your face in the guys under the guy's chin, you don't know where the ball has gone. You don't know if he's thrown it or not. Well, that's incredible. Work. First and ten. O'Neill looking to the right all the way and wants to go deep into the wind. Lewis Jones there defending. Interception. Russell Hairston. <laughs> well, that ball could have been initially intercepted because it hung up in the air, but because the receiver knew where the ball was, McLemore has a chance to make the catch on the comeback. He's got it. It hits his shoulder pad, and great reaction by Hairston. Yeah, most receivers will make that catch. The ball is also a little wet today. You just don't. We talked about. Well, look at our camera. Ooh, we'll talk about too. coverage, too. So it's first and ten. I correct myself. That was McLemore, not Deadweiler, on that deep pass route. Hoffman pops it through into the secondary. First down up to the 19 yard line. But the lead jock by Matt, lead block by Matt Jones inside on Asher. Napoleon Kaufman hits the hole, follows Matt Jones up and inside. Again, rushing defense, fifth in the conference, allowing just over 105 yards. Hill in motion on first and 10 from the 19. Banging up in the uh, backfield. Had, uh, Jeremy Asher's having a great year. He was a highly recruited player. Uh, very highly one of those uh, prized recruits out of the Portland area. And, you know, he's got to get away from Matt Jones most of the day and try to find uh, Kaufman. That, that's a tough assignment because with Kaufman's speed, if you don't get off that inside linebacker right away, he's by you and, and he's you, gone. You have to play your leverage. You have to force the play <laughs> back into your team. Uh, and, and Napoleon got outside on Jeremy that time, that last time. Jerry Williams with some nice penetration from the defensive tackle spot on the last play. Second down and nine. With a single receiver to the right. Hoffman again trying to go off left tackle. Keeps his feet very nicely as he gets up to the 26 yard line. Jeff Sherman again, the free safety. If his longest run isn't any longer than what it's been so far, they'll be okay. But uh, where he gets shows if he can, can snap one. And he hasn't broken a, as many this year. His longest all year at 26 yards. It's third down and three. Hoffman, little spin move, and he won't get it. Nice pursuit. On the part of several people, Ernest Jones, one of the first there, along with Romeo Bannon. It's about how penetration can disrupt an offense before it even has a chance to get going. Obviously, Napoleon Kaufman starts to make a move before he even gets the handoff. He cannot get to the point of attack. Wardell's punt, a low one. Husky roll. Up to the 45-yard line is Brian Brown. And we've got a timeout, 10-27 here. He in the first person, 10 on the 46 of Oregon. O'Neill, who's had two hits already. There comes DeMarco Farr as he brings down Sean Burwell. Much as Vanderson broke up the last Husky offensive play, DeMarco Farr does a number on this one. Dumps back inside Harden and Heath Howington. We see the tackle came down and the guard pull around and uh, DeMarco was just too quick for the tackle to get down and, and get the block. Second and 15, back now on the 41. Strange game so far here in the first quarter. 
A lot of room for O'Neill to run. Gets to the 49-yard line. Still well Daniel short of the first down. They need to get down to the Husky 40. You've got to be impressed with Daniel O'Neill, though, the way he can run. He is an excellent athlete. Reminds me of Miller a little bit. Third down and eight from the 48-yard line. High snap. Far goes after him. Still aboard. Fumble. No, they're saying he was down. Let's talk about the quickness of defensive linemen Jamal Fontaine and DeMarco Farr. You see DeMarco Farr on Mike DeFonso. Looks like DeMarco Farr knows the snap count. A big crowd in that Oregon offensive backfield. Danny O'Neill looking for explanation. Are they saying he was in the grasp, evidently? That or fumble forward pretty... progress was stopped. Okay. Is what were... Four night, uh, fourth down. His forward progress may have been stopped. That's because he was spinning backwards. <laughs> I think that was a good call. Thompson's punt, nice high punt. Vino Bryant calling fair catch at the 21. 4 7 hang time. We don't bring many of those back. Tommy is outstanding. Been around a long time, a senior now out of Lompoc. Been a player of the week. Has been an outstanding weapon for Rich Brooks. That's a good point. He has been a weapon until this year. Right. He really hasn't been the offensive threat in field goals and in the punting area as he has been in Tommy's defense. He hasn't had some support on a couple of punt blocks and also he had a, a pulled muscle in his derriere in fall camp and it hindered his development this year. He has suffered a couple of blocks this year too. First and 10 from the 22. Good for a first down. He's stopped by Chad Coda. Nice wide receivers have to be brought into the game. You know, they, Joe Crowley has very few catches. Yes. Seven catches and uh, they, they've got to get him established. He's a good receiver. First and 10 now from the 34 yard line. Two receivers to the left. Kaufman and nothing doing. Pete O'Brien in the backfield now comes out to the slot position with Kaufman in the back. Second down and six. Draw to Kaufman. First down Washington as he gets up to the 45 yard line. Sherman and Coda on the tackle. I see the Oregon defense has got to send some bodies out there. You can see. Just not that many people left inside for Oregon. Once you break that initial wave, you're back to the free safety. Jeff Sherman, strong safety Chad Cota forced to make the tackle. Cota, 15th in the conference in total tackles. Now first and 10 for Washington. Double tight end. Looking for a reverse. Theron Hill, one lead block. Can't get it, though. Here it is again. Try to take advantage of misdirection, get the defense going one way, get the ball to Theron Hill. If Jim Novell can get an angle on Walker. Yeah, but Walker did a nice job of staying up to where there's no, exactly, no Just angle at all. Stay home, that's all you have to do. That's right, second and eight. Ouch, go those ribs as Mr. Malapai makes the tackle. Tomo Payao. Tomo Payao, is he injured? Okay. He's had uh, injuries almost every week. Uh, one thing or another, nothing major. But he's hung in there gamely. Malapai, not the biggest guy in the world in stature, but very, very quick off the ball. It's tough for a center to block him one on one because he can squeeze into that gap so, so quick. Tomo Payao was indeed taken, taken to the sideline. 535 remaining here in the first quarter. Third down and 10 for the Huskies. Fewer to throw all the way. Goes to Krolik. And they're saying it is complete, but it's short of the first to the Oregon 49 yard. Punt again low and a roll right. Go! Oh! Brown, check that. There's your time remaining. No score here in the first quarter. First and ten despite the uh, the uh, fumble by Brown earlier. Here's Sean Burwell who brings it up close to the 20 yard line. He's brought down by Lewis Jones. They've been able to get three, four, five yards. And if they can do that on first down and make it second and five, second and six, they get a much better chance. Burwell leads Oregon in rushing this year, 300 net yards. He's not having a banner year, but he was bothered by an ankle injury, missed a couple of games. And so he's just now rounding into shape a little bit. Second down and four, got what Oregon needed. On those six, bad snap, O'Neal fighting for his life now. Down he goes. As Devers finds him, Demetrius in his first start as a Huskers. You run the shotgun on second and five from your own 20. Oregon has worked on the shotgun the last two weeks, but you can see Danny O'Neill had no chance there. That play was busted on the snap. Third sack for Devers this year. Third down and 11 after being second and four. Pressure again, cross the middle. 
incomplete. Here comes the scary moment for Oregon, the punting. Washington <laughs> traditionally has blocked punts, returned punts. You know, with all the emphasis this week, I'm sure Oregon put on protecting Thompson, that might set up a return because you don't have the tendency to get downfield as fast. If he can get it up there 4 7 though, he'll be okay. You know, Bryant back waiting. One more touchdown on a punt return, and he sets a Pac-10 record. Not on this one. Nice, high punt. He's going to go for it. Trying to find the seam, trying to find the fence, and it isn't there. Michael Allison, the guy that snaps on the punts, down there, they had the great position. What was the hang time? 4-3-4. 3 6 left in the first quarter. First and 10 on the 37-yard line. A wide receiver to each side. Laying it off. Ooh. Hoffman. Couple of blocks. That pass just way too high and too much of a lob. Ball in the air, a little bit too long. And another injury. Malapai, the nose tackle, who was involved in the hit. Deep in that defensive line. Vanderson with a bad shoulder. Williams a bad ankle. They've missed time. And now, see if we can see what happened to Tomo Piao. Ow. His own man. Yeah. His own man got him. Kind of whiplashed him. Steve Gordon, the offensive line coach uh, for Washington as Malapai has helped off the field. Second down and nine with two receivers on the left side. Hill to the far left. Bottom of your screen outside beyond Krolik. Still wanting to throw across the middle. Scott Krolik, interception. Pass was well short as Oregon will have it at the 44-yard line. And once again, Alex Molden involved. He has played well here in the first quarter as Krolik makes the tackle. Krolik had about five steps on him, however. I think Damon felt the pressure. He could almost see it coming in from his right side. And, uh, and knowing that that rib is exposed, he just didn't plan the throw. Well, they come with an all-out blitz. You see the two inside backers, Rockwell and Massey. And also they come from the corner with Eugene Jackson. And as you mentioned, I think he felt the heat. And Molden with the pick, and he's had a great career, and he's only a sophomore. What a battle. No score, but a lot of going on, wearing out the carpet in the middle of the field. Oregon 43-yard line, no flag on the movement. Burwell up the midfield and gets into Husky territory to the 48-yard line. Linebacker scraped, I believe, a little bit wide here. You can see uh, Steve Spring said, oh, he, he dodged the block inside, which uh, you, you've, got to, you've got to head it up and face it up and, uh, and you work around the outside. Lamar Lyons on the tackle along with Hillary Butler. Second down and one. Burwell, as we said, in the top ten of rushers in the conference. There's the pitch. Burwell's got a good block by Willie Tate. Well into Husky territory down to the 36-yard line where Lamar Lyons makes the tackle. Yeah, Damon Hewitt going with that option. Oh, a great call. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, you get it in second and uh, third and short. You fake the fullback, and it was a good fake. You know, linebackers had to go in honor of the fake. And now you're one-on-one in the secondary. Seeing... The Pac-10's most honorary and effective offense. First and 10 on the 37 of Washington. Burwell again breaks the tackle nicely on Justin Thomas and gets down to the 32 yards. Seven of the conference in rushing now. Second down and six. See, they trap. You know, let him upfield. They're trapping, drawing. You know, they're, they're doing a good job on DeMarco. They've got a game plan. Down and five. Big play for the Ducks here. Pressure, they lay it off in time. Great catch by Burwell. Has the first down and much, much more as he is at the 19-yard line of Washington. Well, he did it with a quick count, too, before the Washington Huskies were set. And you can see what Burwell does for you. He's been running the ball. He has great, great soft hands here. And he got a tremendous lead block by number 33, Malapai. I don't know if we'll see it at the end. Right there on the Reeser to kick him out. And the first quarter has come to an end as Sean Burwell and the Ducks are threatening Oregon with 67 total yards to Washington's 54 here in the first 15 minutes. Here you see the rushing so far. Very, very close passing yardage and total with the turnovers. Two interceptions for O'Neal. One, as you see, and then the penalty. First to 10 on the 19 yard line for the Oregon Ducks. Two receivers to the right side. Burwell is the tailback. Here comes the heat going to the corner. Incomplete. Well played. Uh, that looked like that was going to be six. That's a, the, the famed corner out from the twin set. Inside receiver goes out, and it's a tough one to cover. It's a tough ball to throw with the wind blowing like it is as well. You can see this ball is in the air a long time. Going forward, going backward, you get down 
field level in this stadium, and the ball is going to swirl. The wind is going to swirl the ball. Kilpatrick, great comeback. Second and 10, Burwell cuts inside the 15-yard line. There's McLemore, third down and four from the 13-yard line. Got to get into the nine for a first and goal situation. O'Neal, across the middle, has Tate, has the first down, first and goal at the five. And the thing about Willie Tate is not only does he have nice size, but he also has speed to get downfield. They've used him on some deep routes this year. This one just a little delay. Wait till everybody clears out and then come on. Defenders under. get lost in there. Hey, he had an 87-yard touchdown pass against Illinois back there, and most of it was running. Took him about 20 seconds to go that <laughs> distance, but he made it. I watched it. He had the angle on everybody in one good block, but he made it. First and goal from the five. Power formation by the Ducks. They give it to the fullback, Malapai, and not much there at all for Hulo Malapai, the freshman out of Honolulu. Team scoring. Second and goal from the four for O'Neill. Burwell jammed up again. Oregon has only five rushing touchdowns this year. Only Stanford has less rushing touchdowns. We'll run it inside there, just too many bodies. Great job by Lyons, Kirkpatrick, uh, stuffing it up. Yeah, Chambers got upfield, and that helped. And Lamar Lyons was coming off the corner. Uh, and, and chalk one up on a call made by the Huskies. Chambers, the junior out of Lake Stevens. Oh, Viking. Third down and five. Third and goal from the five. All the receivers on the right side coming back. Looks across the middle. He was out of bounds had he caught it anyway. Mecklemore, the intended receiver. Well, the Huskies faked blitz and fell off into a seven-man zone. They call it cover seven. And, uh, and Danny just couldn't find anybody open. A lot of purple back there, wasn't there? And no the pressure, zone. though. He had a lot of time. Got to give credit to those Husky defensive backs and linebackers for not letting anybody get open because if he was open, O'Neill would have found him because he still had no pressure. Receivers could have run a second, third, fourth route. Inside the hash mark. And it is good from 22 for Tommy Thompson. This is a man you've got a lot of respect for, Don Butch Brooks. Yeah, he's got a tough job now. He's an athletic director and head coach, and the only one in, a, in Division 1A doing that right now. They're going just about, just about every direction, from south to towards the west. And the uh, United States flag, old glory on the east side, now is starting to blow. But a moment ago, it was hanging straight down, no wind at all. Kaufman trying to go right up the belly up to the 32 yard line a great kick in the air a long time deep in the corner but the Huskies block it very well Napoleon Kaufman just finds the scene breaks the tackle almost gets a chance to practice those old high school butt drills with former teammate Tommy Thompson you know Philia one of the first to get to him number 12 Huskies may have gotten away with a uh, block in the back Oregon coaching staff rather they saw, it. Uh, <laughs> they saw it. in their protestations. First and ten. Vino now at the tailback goes in motion. Jones back there. Flag goes down. Guess why? One of the guys in there early. Manage those middle managers. First and five, as Don pointed out a moment ago, on the 37-yard line. Play action. Rolling it out. Conwell has the first down to the 49 yard. He gets up a little slow. He took a hit from Ernest Jones, and you know, even on the, the waggle play here, you're trying to get him away from pressure. And then Jones was there. You want, if you're Washington fans, you don't want Hewer to get hit at all on that play. They call that uh, boot naked sometimes. <laughs> I don't think Damon wants to see too many of those today. Don't go often, but when he does, he goes all the way. Bino, and he's going to be brought down real early. By number 48, Rich Rule. Beautiful job of getting into the backfield. That's a gaps play, uh, backside garden tackle. You can see uh, Peterson and Pearson pulling, but uh, a linebacker got up inside. Back it up to second down and 14. Not a good way to get much done on first down with Rich Rule getting in there if you're a Husky fan. Seems like all season long, the timing on those type of plays has been off for Washington. The running back slightly ahead of the running backs, screen plays, plays like that. Things just not timed up right. Well, you've got to get a, a tight end or someone down in that linebacker. I see Pat Kessie is back in now. Two tight ends again. They'll go to the short side. 
Sore ribs and all, short of the first down, and brought yeah, down by Sherman is Damon Hewitt. Well, again, that's the checkoff there. That's uh, that's not called up above, but that's uh, you know he, you've got a bad play called. You go to your left, you check off to the right. There's not as many people over there. Uh, really well blocked, and again the, the Ducks are going to to cover the tailback on this play and make Damon run. It. That's exactly what you said, Don. Going in was if if he does run or go with the option, it'll be a checkoff. Third down and four. Frolic in motion. Oh, yeah. Got to get on him. There's a penalty. Uh, Frolic goes down back by the quarter. Throw not there. Joe Frolic opens for first down yardage. Damon has been short arming everything, kind of afraid to expose his pants. Indeed, so, fourth down for Jim Lambright's Washington offense. Oregon's only got 10 men on the field, and that's running one in late. That's what in injuries right will do that to you. Yeah. Not this time. Let's take a timeout. 944 remaining here, second quarter. And he may not even have made it back to the line of scrimmage as Hillary Butler was in there. No gain on the play. It makes you go best against the best in the in the season. Mm -hmm. Loss of one, second down and eleven. Remember Butler is way out to the right side. Quick dive. Malapai gets the first down up to the 33, 34 yard line. Malapai averaging only a yard and a half per carry coming into this one. First and ten now from the 34 yard line. Wanting to go deep. McLemore complete to the Husky 35 yard line. Josh Moore there defending. Well, Josh made a very poor read. He thought he saw a post. It was post corner. And he jumped on the post and uh, he just got left uh, alone out there. Perfect throw by Danny O'Neill as well. Sees the opening, throw the ball to the boundary. McLemore makes a nice adjustment to the ball and the win this time. Josh Moore unable to make up that ground. 31 yard play on the connection from O'Neill to this man, McLemore, the sophomore out of Huntington Beach, California. First and 10 from the 35, eight and a half minutes to go, second quarter. Kaboom, Whittle. Hit by Lewis Jones, but still bounces off to pick up pretty good yardage to the 31 yard line where Devers and Jones finally play. Well, Ricky Whittle is Oregon's hardest running and maybe most difficult running back to tackle. He has a low center of gravity, has good speed, isn't the shifty guy that Sean Burwell is, but he'll run north and south. And if you don't get a solid lick on him, he'll break an arm test. Second down and seven after the carry by Whittle. Great play, uh, play action across the middle. He intended for Deadwood. Getting back to Howington, uh, Coach, uh, two years ago up here, Keith Howington had a rather rude introduction to college football as a redshirt freshman. He had to go nose to nose with Steve Entman. He even made Sports Illustrated, if I remember correctly. That maybe is a catchable ball by Deadwater there. And what a way to have to spend an afternoon. Oh, oh, oh. He spent about five afternoons. Well, think of the uh, backup center for the uh, Washington State Cougars going against Rob Walter today, Arizona. Steve Wolf down with injuries, maybe for his career at Washington State. Third down and seven. Willie Tate in the slot to the left side, receivers to both sides. Here comes the pressure and complete. McLemore, Reggie Reeser defending, and he's got the first down. Oregon has an offense this year that you can't just key on one guy and figure to stop them. They have three outstanding wideouts, Burwell and a tight end. And so now you have in that passing game to defend four or five players instead of trying to double cover a couple. And you see Kristen McLemore, obviously today, for some reason, he's the go-to guy. Well, they're playing a little more zone now. The Huskies uh, have gotten away from the blitz. They've gotten burned a few times. And uh, are they uh, again, Danny did a great job against the zone. First and ten, two receivers to the right, Deadweiler to the left, or short side, flag down on the pitch to Whittle. Nice block, nice job of jamming it by Lewis Jones. Kick off of the second half. That was a great way to start the second half, wasn't oh, it? Uh, yeah. It was uh, deja vu all over again. <laughs> well, for the last two games, as you pointed out, on Washington. First and five from the 17. Going for the corner, Reggie Reeser's got a pick. And he'll sit down. Thank you very much, Danny O'Neill. 
Uh, again, a big turnover for the Husky defense. The Husky offense has got to get uncracked and do something. Maybe he was trying to throw it away. I'm not sure. I think maybe he was just trying to get it out of the end zone. Boy. But he's gone to McLemore. And on first and five, you would figure, well, let's be a little conservative. But Oregon's play calling this year has been very aggressive no matter what the situation. They're telling the other defenses, hey, we're going to throw deep on you no matter where we are here at backfires. First and ten from the 20 yard line. Three turnovers now on Oregon. Heward still in the quarterback. Vino Bryant slides out to the left side, trying to get around the corner. And close to a first down gain of about seven yards, where finally Coda forces him OB. Good situation for the dogs. Second down and two from the 28. P.A. Emerson moving up. P.A. Emerson, Oop. number 79. Anxious. So, as Don pointed out, it is now second and seven. Vino has the first. Up to the 45 and out of bounds. Just like Oregon, you break that initial wave when you're sending people and in man-to-man -man defense and there's nobody left. Dave Janoski and D.J. McCarthy, wide receivers, both split right. All they do to block their man is run downfield because the defenders are in man-to-man. -man. They're coached to run with them. Not Bino's longest of the year. He had a 34-yard touchdown against San Jose State. He'll get another shot at him. First down. Ooh, he started to get into the groove, didn't he? After a five-yard gain on first down, he is stopped by Shirts and fired. You see that? See Richard Thomas in there at fullback. Good kick-out block. Good block on it. Oh. Bruner did a good job on Ernest Jones, the outside linebacker, forced him inside. They give him six, so it's second and four with McCarthy wide to the right side, the only wide receiver, and again, double tight end. Bino, third straight time, trying to get the first on third and two. First down, Washington. So the Huskies are coming up with their best drive so far today. And that was not a checkoff. That was a that was called from the press box. And again, as, as Oregon ran that play a little while ago, it's a, it, defensive coordinators don't want to see an option on third and short. You have to respect the fullback. You see the fake that Richard Trump, Thomas draws a couple of people. Ooh. David knows he doesn't have to gain eight or ten yards. Just turn it up inside and get enough to let your offense snap it again. Credit there. Yes. First and ten. Richard Thomas starting to show some of that muscle as he is short of the first but gets inside the 45 stop by Romeo Banderson and Jeff Sherman. Well, Richard's a power runner 5'9", 217 and uh, had a good game last year against the Ducks. Came in late in the game and uh, had some good runs. See here's where Oregon Banderson forgot to make the tackle and tried to create the turnover. He got a hold of the ball carrier and then it's the second guy's responsibility to come in and strip the ball but Banderson in trying to strip the ball Get him gave stopped. up another four or five yards. Richard with only 10 carries coming into this game. It's nice to see him get busy in there. Yeah, he had a 20 some yarder against the Ducks last year. Second and two, Bino. To Peterson. It is indeed. Cuts back. He can have six. There he goes. Touchdown, Washington. I heard a whistle. Oh, no, no whistle. I thought I heard one, but the official referee single touchdown. Now watch. Let's wait. The flag back on the line of scrimmage. Let's find out what it's all about. I thought I heard a whistle as well, and then it looked like some of the Oregon players stopped. Yeah. Now you don't. You don't stop the play on defense with no. people off the offside. Well, yeah. uh, the second touchdown of the year. Both long plays. 34 on the last one. 35 on this one. Richard Thomas, a great cutout block. Andy Peterson downfield, and then Bino just sees nobody back in the middle and makes a vintage cut. Jeff Sherman, number 32, pl playing with a broken hand, was unable to wrap him up. Eric Jordan holds. And the Huskies are on the board with seven points and the lead at 7-3. to three. 42 remaining here in the first half. Not a lot of points, but plenty of hitting and a typical duck-dog game. Yeah. Gusty down there on the carpet. That's the longest Husky run, by the way, of the season. As you see Sean Burwell waiting, he is one of the leaders in kickoff return. Number two in the Pac-10, and he won't get a chance. First and ten for the Ducks now as they trail for the first time. Seven to three. Flags on the line. Movement again. Is it Mr. Stark? There have been a lot of antsy offensive linemen this year in the Pac-10. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but every game, it seems... 
So our crack staff did a little researching. And the last year, 1992, there were five teams in the league that averaged less than 60 yards in penalties per game. This year, there's nobody under 60 yards penalties. So everybody is worse in that category. Yeah, but you know what? Those are those are all those celebration penalties. Well, some of that, too, but a lot of illegal procedure penalties this year. You must have watched the Washington Cow game. <laughs> Cal must, Cal must have moved 10 times. Vasco lead to Deadwater, the 20, second to 10 after his last reception. Tate and Mecklemore to the right side. Wyler to the left. They stay inside. Malapai and so does Richie Chambers. Ah, golden foot down there. Third down and nine. O'Neill across the middle. Nice catch by Deadweiler. Looks like he's got the first nice gutsy play by Deadweiler, the senior out of San Diego. Does does two things. One, it keeps the drive alive, and it also keeps. The ball away from Washington again. They would have had about three minutes on offense, maybe to get another score. And remember, last year a big block punt near the end of the first half took all the air out of Oregon's balloon in that position. Right. Wider again with the reception. First down, Burwell. Not much there as Demarco Farr is one of the first ones there, along with Hillary Butler. Second down and ten. Across the middle, get it to the fullback Malapai, and he is met by Springstead. Short game, only to the 35. Well, uh, let's call it the 37-yard line. Oregon would like to play the last song here in the first half, but a long ways to go in a minute and 43. Well, Tommy has great range in practice. Uh, you know, regularly on the Friday afternoon practices, he'll make field goals from 62 or maybe even 67. Of course, that's with no rush, but still, it shows you the leg strength that he has. Lampak, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overall, though, Oregon 10th in the conference in net punting at 32.8. Third down and five. Going to Burwell, low and away as Richie Chambers came in for the side swipe at the end. Minute 38 remaining. It's hard to do both. Protect the punter and have good coverage. Ten people up. Look out! Lamar Lyons almost with a flag down in the backfield of Oregon. Boy, it's tough catching those footballs in the wind, as Vino can attest. Let's find out what the flag's about. Well, they didn't touch the punter. Ooh -hoo. Ooh -hoo. Not enough men in the backfield. Tommy will try it again. This time he's standing on his own 18. And the ball's on the 32. Returns. returns on, isn't it? This is not as good a punt. And Vino should be able to return it. Got to get to that fence. Greenlaw gives him a cut black rock. And Coda brings him down at the 38 yard line with the flag down. I think Scott Greenlaw uh, made a, a block there in the back. And I think uh, Rich saw it and then told the uh, wing <laughs> official. And uh, that flag came out a little bit late. They're making up for the one they missed on the uh, on the kickoff uh, earlier. That oh. flood our referee today. Well, now your philosophy is absolutely switched around. Now it's Washington inside the 20. Now it's Oregon that wants to stop with the field position. So, boy, it's really bizarre how you know, special teams are one play can swing the the coach's decisions one way or another. Damon well, going from the shotgun too. You forced him to punt for the second time after a 46 yard net mm -hmm. punt and you ended up behind where you would have been if you had just taken the play and, and uh, the original play. Kaufman and nothing doing as Coda basically mirrored him coming out of the backfield as a good safety will do if that's his assignment. On second down and six Kralik wide to the right single coverage with Walker on him at least it looks that way dropping way back though Hill out of bounds at the 40 and a first down 41 seconds remaining first Washington down. has a long way to go doesn't want to give up the big play playing soft in the zone so Ron Hill does a good job of finding a hole against that sideline Damon Hewer does a good job of finding Theron Hill take what they'll give you 41 seconds Huskies need about 30 more yards to get into field goal range Looks left again. Got to get away from the pressure. Nicole, Napoleon gets away from the cornerback. Let's see where they mark it. By golly, he got the first down, and he is into the Oregon part of the field at the 47-yard line. Clock stopped with 34 seconds remaining. Did you see how quick that first step was? <laughs> you run. Damon Hewitt says, I know he's faster than I am. Watch this right there. Jackson. Woo. Well, and poor tackling, because the last thing you want him to do is run outside. You'd like to tackle him outside in. 
Where if you're you? Eugene Jackson right here, because you've got help on the inside to get the out-of-bounds, stop the clock at the outside. And you know you've got to break down when you yep. get up to him. Easier said than done. <laughs> 47 of Oregon, first and 10, 34 seconds to work with. Across the middle, Kralik, too far. I think he did that right off the bat. Down in 10, 28 seconds remaining. First half, Huskies lead 7-3. Good protection. Jones and Matt has it down to the 44 and out of bounds. Clock stopped with 23 seconds. So they used only five ticks on the play as Eugene Jackson was there defensively. I thought he had Theron Hill on the corner route. Uh, looked like the uh, the cornerback was uh, was off about four or five yards. And that's what they basically need now, Chuck, to get this thing within uh, field goal. Just going to say, how many more yards, Chuck? Get the ball down to the 30-yard line makes it a 47-yard field goal. So they have about 14 more yards to do that. Into this win, I think 47 is about the max that you're going to see Travis Hansen be able to come up with. He had a 42-yarder last week, his longest of the year. Theron Hill, there it is. Came right back to it. It was open on the play before. Jeff Woodruff saw it, I'm sure, in the press box. Came right back to it. If, if Oregon's going to play that zone, uh, that's that's what they've got to do to get it down into field goal range. Second time, they've basically thrown the ball over there. This drive, remember early in the drive, missed one on the last play with not throwing it. That time, they're okay. For an attempted field goal. First and 10. Matt Jones, now they're inside the 30 to the 20, call it the 29 yard line. The draw is a real tough play to defend right now for uh, the Oregon defense. They're down to one linebacker in the middle. Second down and eight. Looking deeper. Hill, this time overthrown. 20 mile an hour win. I just soon see him do something to get me, help yeah. get me to 40 yards. Watch the, watch the flag now, right there. It's almost dead right to left for the kicker. Got a hurry. Third and eight. Going for the big play. Oh, almost the takeaway. Well, you got to make those plays if you're a free safety. Jeff that's Sherman. Two, that's two that he's had right in his midst this year. One against Illinois that would have sealed the victory back there. And then this one here. Because uh, now you give opportunity to Washington to get uh, three points. Good coverage by Woods. You got the help over the top by Sherman. And again, you see that left hand. He's got a broken thumb. It's tough to catch the ball. Six yard attempt, left hash mark. Into a win, right to left. Long enough, no good. To the left. And that will end the first half as he attempted that 46 yard attempt. He has a 22 yarder. Check that. That being, of course, Washington won the toss at the beginning of the game, if you recall. They deferred, and now they will be receiving here in the second half with the win to their faces, which means they uh, shall have it to their backs in the fourth quarter. As best we can tell, I don't know. Flag blowing almost directly from the south. Bino from the 13. And he is up to the 35-yard line. A good field position for Washington last week. Oregon had a heck of a time on kickoff coverage. They gave, it, gave up over 200 yards in kickoff coverage. See the first half possessions first for Washington. And they get the TD near the end of the half. And then another good drive missing the field goal. Oregon, meanwhile, uh, wasn't able to consistently move the ball either. So it's first and ten, and again, it's that double tight end formation. Conwell and Bruner in there. They give to Matt Jones, first down, good first down play of seven yards, six, seven yards, where Rich Rule made the tackle number 48, the linebacker. Hewitt across the middle goes to Ernie Conwell. Oh, intercepted by Oregon. Was it Rich Rule? John Tomo Payao, I okay, believe. Tomo Payao, indeed. The he was the outside injured, linebacker. He was the injured player that they helped off uh, in the second quarter, and now the deflection, and this has been a day for the defenses. You're talking about trying to get the tight end involved early. Ernie Conwell running his route, avoids the official, doesn't look back to the quarterback in time to see the ball hit him right in the middle of the chest. Tomo Payao, the recipient of the lucky bounce you can see the ball well thrown route well run just doesn't get his eyes back to the quarterback in time and that field position that Washington had from the good kickoff return has been given back to Oregon first and 10 is Malapai gets down to the 32 short of the first down but there is a flag down back on the line of scrimmage when it comes out that quick by the umpire it's got to be home and if you're an offensive lineman you just hope that the flag doesn't hit you <laughs> Back to the Oregon 49-yard line. 
Rich would rather have them jump offside if they're that anxious to stop those defensive linemen. Go ahead and jump offside. <laughs> it's only five. Well, we started the second half with roll reversals. Oregon turned it over three times with interceptions in the first half. Washington got the penalties. Now it's the other way around. Washington now with two turnovers for the game. One here in the second half. O'Neill, a lot of time to throw and completes it to McLemore. And they're up to about 11 yards from the first down. You see Oregon's possessions in the first half, the two picks, so they dodged a bullet early. One of those interceptions deep in their own territory, the other one at the Husky Five, and a couple of punts. Finally got things on track with the field goal, but another interception in the end zone cost them more points. Tate and McLemore to the left side on second and 12. Deflection. It was Jamal Fontaine. Again, uh, you know, you, now you can see Jamal Fontaine can't put a lot of pressure on. He's got to work for leverage and containment, but he did get his hands up and got the ball knocked down. That's a big play. Far touch him, evidently. <laughs> Barnes is still standing there. He finally comes over to protect his quarterback. Keep an eye, remember, the flag is down right. as Malloy gets the pick, and this is... We assume wasted energy to throw it deep, but to throw it deep for no reason. That was that spot pass. Was pass flow. On the defense, repeat third down. No one was on the spot. Again, McLemore and Tate to the left on third and six. Better pressure by the Huskies. Tate looking left and not looking right to catch the ball. And that ball was not thrown with a lot of velocity. Danny rolling left, throwing across his body. And uh, this one didn't have much mustard on it. Good pressure by Hillary Butler. Yeah. Jamal Fontaine didn't contain Hillary up underneath. And uh, beat on Bryant on his own 10. On his own 50. That's hard to do. How about on the 50? Going for the right corner. Beautiful job by the Ducks. Do they keep it in? And to rest inside the three yard line. Nine guys down there down in that ball. Yeah. Tommy Thompson and one other guy, the only two Oregon guys that aren't involved. You see a great play downfield. Now remember, they can catch the ball if no Husky is trying to. There is not trying to. And Grady O'Connor does a good job of keeping it in play and then everybody else gets involved. Four yard line. Again, two tight ends. Matt Jones trying to. Get a little breathing room out beyond the five yard line. Short game. Second down and eight. Kaufman against the wall and then sidesteps his way to the 10 yard line. Short game again with the ball. Another Oregon player injured on the play as well. That was Gary Williams. And that's the same ankle that he injured last week. Not uh, necessarily a pass rusher, but you lose some beef. You lose a senior that's played for three plus years as well. Right. And now you got to bring in a younger guy that's probably going to give up about 20 pounds. And that'll be DJ Cabrera at 6'4 and 250. And you're right on the button with Kaufman and Jones in the backfield. Check that. It's Richard Thomas. Trying to gain to the first and will not do so. And it'll be time to punt for John Wardell. And if he were to get a good one, it's a good time to do it. Right? Flags on the goalpost, 10 yards behind. John Wardell are whipping away. Oh, sideways, yeah. <laughs> Low and wobbly, very returnable from the Husky 46. Good coverage. A flag goes down. 10 yards from the end of the run. First and 10. John Wardell's had some problems with what they think are like kidney infections or something. See, Oregon has been a very, very good first half team. And uh, obviously not very good in the second half. The Huskies have been just the opposite. They've been pretty good in the second half. Two to one margin they're scoring versus the opposition. First and ten from the 48-yard line of Oregon as the Ducks take over. They trail 7-3. Burwell opening on the right side as the first. Gets down to the 36-yard line of Washington. Today we've seen that counter tray where they pulled a couple of people. Normally against Washington, you hate to pull people because of penetration, but this time they run it. Well, they were in the 4-6 defense, and Danny O'Neill saw the perfect place to run it. Too. He ran it back to the short side into the boundary where the Huskies were a man short. Shot out of Canoga Park, California. It's first and 10 from the 36-yard line. Trying to do it again. This time, Steve Springstead is there waiting for him. He's balanced up their defense that time, and uh, and they were not short on the weak side, so they had as much strength into the boundary as they did into the field, and you see a good job by Steve Springstead uh, getting out as well as uh, Richard Chambers. Second down and nine for Oregon. 
Looking right, throwing left. Deadweiler gets away from Jones. No, trips him up or actually mixes him or causes him to slip. Third down and 10. Almost batting 500. It is good. Maybe short. Let's wait and see. Mecklemore, the receiver, going to be about a yard short. I think you're right, and it's a big decision for Rich Brooks, a decision that he's already made. We're going to try for the three. A good protection this time by Oregon as well. Daniel Neal puts the ball in the perfect place, and a good job by Mecklemore to keep Lamar Lyons on his back and make the catch. Timeout is being called by Oregon as Tommy Thompson will think about this one and line it up. We'll be back 851 third quarter. 44 yard attempt his longest this year at 39 but you know he is well within his range from 44 almost straight away and the wind pretty much behind his back we think. And it's good. Plenty of leg. Huskies played safe there. They didn't have a rush. I think they were really concerned about a quick play and uh, and basically willing to give them the three pointer if they can make it. Plenty of leg. Snap comes back well handled. And very seldom will you see that all those linebackers standing on a uh, on a field goal. Thompson's now hit five of his last six. That was his longest of the year. Another good tight Washington Oregon football game. And you know that if you took the microphones and we just would shut up for a while, you'd hear some of the best popping and hitting that you'd get all year when these two meet. Hoffman from the four. Up to the 20. Squirts in for another five yards to the 25-yard line. Blocked too early. They, the guys threw their blocks, and there was pretty good hang time on the kick, and uh, the holes flowed up. There was a gigantic uh, hole there. At one Had heart surgery, of course, down in California. Looking at a reverse. Nope. Kaufman keeps and only gets two yards out of it as it was defended very nicely by Ernest Jones and the rest of the Oregon Ducks. That's a play Oregon has run this year. Kristen McLemore has run the reverse from the receiver spot and has thrown the ball, former high school quarterback. He's one of three. Hit a 20 yarder. Second down and eight. Ooh, nice protection from behind. Maybe. Banderson still giving chase. He still gets him. Nice effort by Romeo Banderson. Damon landed right on the ball yep. in his right ribs, right in the area that he has the injury. Yeah, he didn't have to do that either. He could have uh, he could have thrown it away. There's a duck down too. Excuse me, Don. There's a replay. See, it's counter bootleg. See, he rolls out to the right, and he's got time to make now, the decision right there. Dump it to Matt Jones. Matt Jones and I yeah. think what happened is he got the wind knocked out of him. They're spending as much yeah. time. Happened to me too. Oh, it's, you see the injured. That's Mark Slyman, Mark Slyman well. backup defensive end. Third down and eight yards to go for Washington now after the injuries, and of course Eric Bjornsson comes into the ball game at quarterback with a nine for 25 track record passing so far this year. Third down and eight. And the keeper, Eric, fights his way up for the first down. Let's see, where are they going to mark it? Yeah. He put the left foot down instead of the right yeah. foot. Yeah. It's like John Madden says, which foot is he using, the left or the right? And I think he used the left this time. Take a look. See, the Oregon side of the field is where they run this thing, and Eric Bjornsson makes the correct decision. Theron Hill tries to get into him. You can see. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. It's, his feet were way past the, the, the marker. It's just whether the ball was. I don't think the official could have seen it. You Plus, like this decision, Don? Looks like they're going for it. Well, if you can't make a foot on people, you know, you probably don't deserve to play. And, you, you know, you're not going to win big games if you can't make a yard. you got to be able to just move forward. No there linebacker up close. Yep, that's what it is. All you've got to do is get just short of the 35-yard line. I could get a first down behind Jim Neville. Right on the 35-yard line. 7-17 to go here in the third. Looks like the checkoff. Sweet. Coda with a tackle for Oregon. 6-1 and 188. The right guard, Pat Casey, come along the left-hand side. And nice kick out block. Mac Jones runs right by Rich Rule. Linebackers have heard this play today. They're not, they're not getting an onside lineman down on it. Second down and three after the seven-yard gain. There's Patrick. Kaufman following Peterson. Oh, Goodbye. It'll be a 
longest play of the year. No flags. Touchdown, Washington. That's Peterson's job to go down there and make sure that he doesn't celebrate. <laughs> One of the uh, Oregon secondary players got confused. Thought, thought the ball was inside, made a bad decision. Lamont Woods, the outside right corner, lost uh, track of where number eight was, and he went inside, and Napoleon went outside, and Napoleon went 57. 58 yard run. As now Travis Hansen comes out. And has done his job. And the Huskies move back up to that lead, 14 to 6. Off the 58 yard run, yes, by far his longest this year. 26 was the longest going into this game. Very similar to the play we just saw right there. You see Matt Jones once again. Andy Peterson pulls outside, and Napoleon gets out in the open field, and you saw the corner flash down inside. Basically, it looked like he was almost running to Matt Jones as opposed to Napoleon Kaufman. Mark Bruner made a great play. Mark really sealed the outside so the two pullers could, could get outside of Mark, and uh, there, were, there were not enough people to block. It's like Matt Jones planted somebody, too. Two minutes, 23 seconds, 75 yards. It's been a long time, actually, since we've seen Napoleon Orbino bust a big one like that. He's in the Crab with a kick, and it's short. But effective. And Whittle goes out of bounds. Yes, very effective as they force him out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Jason Crabb is very good at doing that on purpose. For the Oregon Ducks, it's first and 10. They trail 14 to 6. Down by 8. O'Neill. More time. Beavers gives chase. Here's Willie Tate, the tight end. Takes a couple of Huskies with him up to the 36-yard line and a first down for Oregon. Didn't take long to get uh, Willie Tate in the game, did it? That's exactly right. They need to get him the ball because not only can he catch it, but he can break tackles, too. He's a big, strong guy, and it usually takes three or four to bring him down. Pretty simple-looking play here. That's a play-action pass off the counter play that the Huskies just ran twice in a row. Patrick on the tackle. Play action inside kept Hillary Butler inside, and he wasn't able to get out in the flat in time to get to Willie Tate. Kilpatrick went for a bit of a ride, too. Willie is strong. First and ten. Dead water wide to the left side. A couple more to the right. Now we're in the counter. Springstead is able to run him down. That's the counter there. They, they ran the counter pass first and came back with the counter. You see the, uh, the left guard, left tackle, number 63, pulling there. And this play is set up pretty well, but the speed inside makes the difference. No he doesn't make that tackle. That's a 10 or 15 yard. Lead. I didn't think uh, Steve would get to it. Second down and seven. They only got three yards on the play by Burwell. Same formation with Deadweiler to the left. Here comes the blitz with Malloy. Picked up nicely, and McLemore has the first down up to 50, up to the 50. You saw Lawyer Malloy coming. They, the Ducks did a good job of picking him up. There he is, number nine. Uh, sealed very well. Eric Barnes picked to be impressed. And Josh Moore was turned around again. Everybody stays in the block on this play. Only the two split people out running routes. Good adjustments by quarterback and receiver. Danny O'Neill has to do a 360 before he knows if the pass is caught. First and ten, ball right at midfield. Two receivers to the left, McLemore and Tate. Looking to reverse, it is. Here comes Deadweiler. Hillary Butler giving chase. Deadweiler to the 40 and tripped up by David Kilpatrick. They get a first down. Good call. Jamal Fontaine uh, really either went to sleep or was on an inside move because uh, he's gone. Watch Jamal. You know, he's the guy, the only guy back here that can get this stopped. And, uh, I have a feeling maybe Jamal might have been fooled on that. A good job by Willie Tate. He got a piece of two Huskies. First and ten in Husky territory. Ball on the 37-yard line with both receivers to the right side. And Willie Tate coming to the left as he throws right over the middle. Hairston is there for the interception. He didn't have him there. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. So two interceptions in the end zone for Washington and one at their own five. And this is a young man who came in with only six interceptions all year and he has four today. And then he had a lot of time there. I mean, that's triple coverage. Yeah. Talk about trying to get Willie Tate back in the game. They did on the one play. And Oregon gets the ball back. They might try to free Willie. <laughs> 
but a bing, but a boom. First and ten from the twenty. And Napoleon. Threw a lot of yeah, he did. Took yeah. Brian Jackson to about the forty-yard line. He likes that uh, right guard position. He wants to play. Second and three. Conwell is it picked off? No. Coda very close. He's fast. Again, this is a play that uh, burned us in the Rose Bowl a couple of times. Um, fake to the strong side, come back to your tight end. Uh, I'll say this: uh, Lewis had excellent coverage. Sure did, Dante Lewis, the free safety. The ball is in the air a long time. It's yeah. still That's alive, still alive at, that at this point. point. You see yeah. it flying out. DJ McCarthy, the wide receiver on the right now, on third and three. Kaufman trying to get a first, does, and is out of bounds at the 35-yard line. That play, Romeo Bandison with the penetration early. Kaufman gets off and gets it enough to get outside. Watch 97 come underneath here, but Napoleon Kaufman gets outside and a nice jock once block once again by Matt Jones. Yard mark. Huskies don't lose very often when Napoleon Kaufman gains over 100 yards. About 18, 19 straight, something like that now, and one of the running backs hits 100. In terms of victory, Hoffman slicing back against the grain where Ernest Jones meets up with him. You are looking at second down and seven. This quarter going fast. We're down to the three minute mark already. Hoffman again. Not much. Danison stayed home very well, closed down. And Massey got underneath the, yes. the pulling guard there, too. And, and that's a couple of times Oregon's tried to go underneath that block. They've missed a couple. Rich Rule has missed a couple coming inside there. But this time, Massey, he's got speed, and they missed him inside last week. Arizona State ran the ball pretty well. In fact, better than anybody has done against Oregon this year. He look familiar he's, to he's, you limping, he's limping now, too. Yeah, that's a guy. That's a guy. We'll <laughs> you get him. <laughs> you've seen those headlights before, haven't you? Third and six from right on the 40. And the shotgun. Kaufman trying to get him out of the open, let him do his thing. And he's got his first down to the 48-yard line. Good job there by Napoleon Kaufman. He gets the ball in the open field on the throw from Hewitt and recognizes that I got three guys. I'm not going to out-juke three guys. I can need a first down. I'm just going to go straight forward and hope I get it. And he does. Minute 53. Clock going here in the third. First and 10 from the... Husky 48 yard line. Vino. Hey, he makes the most of it as he gets to midfield, a two yard gain, but it was by committee. Second down and seven, ball just into duck territory. There you go. Toss sweep, Vino. And tripped up and tripped up very well. It was indeed Rockwell coming in again, the senior. He only had five tackles coming into this game, Todd. As I mentioned, Asher has gotten almost all the reps there inside, along with Massey and Rule. Rockwell is a very intelligent young man. He's got almost a four-point average. Wants to uh, get into the stock market business. I don't know if this is a good time to do what a that. What mistake. But <laughs> it better be. Just so he's using somebody else's money, not his, right? Uh, don't knock that profession. Uh, Chuck is right. a stockbroker, uh, well, among we, other things. We know. <laughs> it better be good. Yeah. Third down at seven. Not sure where he's going now. Tries to throw it underneath to get it to Theron Hill. Flag goes down. Anderson with a little extracurricular, maybe. Well, why do you throw a flag on that? That late, unless he... And he went right to the official. It was over by Theron Hill. There's no flag. There was an eligible receiver in the area. Fourth down. Well, why didn't he see that before he threw the flag? There he is for Oregon. Damon wanted to go to Mark Bruner that time, and the Duck linebackers were all over him. Wobbly punt. They get a good roll. Looks like it's going to be an Oregon roll. Touched Leif Johnson right there, didn't it? Danny O'Neill with four interceptions today. A rough one for him, but he's still in it. First and ten from the 21-yard line. As the this will be the last play of the third quarter. Well, Jamal Fontaine fooled again. I, I, you know, unless he's on a charge, he has no business in there. He's he's got the quarterback coming outside with the ball, and if they're running a fake the other side, he's not going to stop the play. Pass was to Josh Wilcox, the backup tight end to Willie Tate. Richie Chambers on the play defensively. End of the third quarter. First and ten on the 34-yard line for the Ducks as they trail by eight, and we begin the fourth. Fumble. Huskies have it. Was that Whittle? Yep. 
Well, we talk about his lack of fumbling and ability to hold on, and I'm not sure he ever got it. I'm not sure he ever got it. I think you're right. Reggie Reeser on the recovery. He looks like just as the ball is handed to him, somebody gets either an arm in there or the exchange between he and O'Neill isn't good. Let's check. It was a late shift. He never got it. He no, either didn't. Never did, uh, never got he it. didn't either wrap it up or O'Neill didn't put it in right. Looks like it hit his right forearm, maybe. And sometimes being injured and not practicing much and playing much uh, causes of that also. First and ten in for the Huskies after another turnover. Unofficially, that's five now. Matt Jones, and he's slowed down by Bandison, trying to go outside. The stiff arm doesn't quite work as Isaac Walker makes the stop. In the third quarter, boy, the rushing is really going towards the Huskies now. And total yardage and the turnovers, that was indeed the fifth one. And the penalties, again, still a major part of the game. And Oregon has been averaging, you look at total yards, they've been averaging almost 440 yards a game. So Washington has done a good job. Second down and seven. Look out. Oh my goodness. Merry Christmas Isaac Walker and he can't hold on. You talk about a sight adjusted play and they didn't cite the same thing. <laughs> they might have cited the same thing but they certainly didn't adjust the same way. Wow. Woo! Uh, Theron was saying, boy, have I got me six going deep, and uh, that cornerback out there said, I've got me six going the other way. Well, you saw Damon look off to the left, and... Oh! That Theron. was not supposed to be sight-adjusted if Damon's looking left. Wow. Third down and seven. This time, receivers to the left side. Kaufman. That's a great play by Chad Coe staying it home. <laughs> He's supposed to stay on that hash mark, and that's right where he was, and... Napoleon gave him a couple of hips left and right. And Coda did not fight. Nobody left. He was a guy. He was it. Had to stay behind it. Watch. They play fairly well blocked at the point of attack, but Chad Coda keeps everything on his inside shoulder. Good play, Chad Coda. So it's fourth and two. The decision has not been made yet. They're going to let the clock run down and take a, take a timeout, but use up as much clock as they can. Huskies have called a timeout. By the way, Napoleon Kaufman, 17 carries, 128 yards. We'll be back. A little better day than it was when we started at 12.30 this afternoon. Don, this is when the head coach works for his pay. <laughs> Fourth and two, there's 70,000 people that are going to second-guess this. They all want him to go for it, but they also want him to make it. <laughs> and, and what do your assistant coaches tell you? Uh, they don't say a word. <laughs> you want some help, and they, the microphones are quiet. <laughs> nobody upstairs, nobody, nobody home. I like this call, though. I like this decision. Uh, it's a long field goal. Get what you can. Maybe make it. Leave it there if you don't make it. They need two yards on fourth down. Jones and Kaufman in the backfield. One wide receiver. Two tight ends. And Eric Bjorkson at quarterback gets the first down. If you know you're going to run the option, put in the guy that can run the option. Alabama puts in David Palmer on a two-point conversion play. The Huskies put in Damon H er, and er Eric Bjornsson. A good play fake inside to Matt Jones. Keeps the linebacker inside long enough for Eric Bjornsson to get to the corner and turn it. And again, you can see that the Oregon defense worked hard on stopping the tailback. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely, there's no pitch there. And, and in that particular situation, it hurts them because yeah, it opens up a three or four yard scene. Jeff Sherman on that tackle. And interestingly enough, it is still Bjornsson at quarterback. Kaufman. Oh, my. Pops his way through. Sherman gets him. Watch number 22, Matt Jones. Looks like he's got a number eight tattooed on his back right here. Great job by Napoleon Kaufman. Got the right hand between the two and the two. Good job by everybody else up front, keeping people off of him. Second down and three. Jones should have the first down, and it'll be first and goal for Washington. Eric's still in there. This is helpful after trying to struggle in that game against UCLA. Kaboom. And the big guy, Bjornsson, just simply tucks it under and goes in for the first down. You quick snap it. Just fall forward. As Crawley comes out to the left side for Coach Lambright. And the double tight end. Kaufman right up the belly. Down to the two. Maybe the one and a half yard line. After the sight adjustment that was maladjusted, have they thrown a pass in this drive since then? I think they've decided that they're going to run this ball in the end zone. 
Second and goal from the two. Kaufman over the top. And the second TD, Kaufman paying for that one. They may not have thrown any passes, but they're putting the ball in the air. I think the uh, the injuries to the Oregon defensive front are really taking its toll now. Uh, and now you're going to see uh, you're going to see a shootout. Now Danny O'Neill's going to take the ball it. and put it up. So it's going to get exciting. Napoleon lands right on his back. Ouch. At 20 to six, Hanson can extend the lead and does so. So at 10:15 remaining here in the fourth quarter, Huskies extending it to a 21 to six margin. We'll be back. 267 yards so far. Burwell and Whittle. Burwell leaves it there on the end, as in Washington. Got Willie Tate out here at the bottom. Uh, play some wide receiver for him. Big target. Bit wider is at the top of your screen. There's the pitch to Burwell. And Richie Chambers closing in well. Got some help from Reggie Reeser as well, who closed in extremely well. Oh, and I thought, but uh, the Huskies were in it too deep. So that meant that Reggie could come up quickly and support from the outside. The play blocked well from the inside, but the one linebacker out there and Reggie Reeser a good job of forcing from the corner. Second down and nine. Good job. <laughs> O'Neill still looks and finally has to go out of bounds. Now we might have a penalty here. Let's see. No. Uh, they usually get that one called. Uh, yeah, I'm amazed they didn't call it. Especially on the Oregon sideline, but you don't see any. Rich Brooks surprised isn't the Marco. about halfway up the whistle on one of those officials. DeMarco, I believe that was, was that Cedric White or DeMarco Farr? That, uh, I think it was DeMarco. DeMarco. You see Demetrius Devers here. This ran oh, oh, Mr. Burwell. Burwell will get credit. He made the block and got him out of the play. Yeah. So DeMarco Farr continues to pursue and right here. Oh, everybody's oh just, my. I can't believe they didn't call I think that. maybe he was trying to. It looked a little better on the play, uh, replay than it did. It uh, looked like maybe he was trying to back off a little. That's what the officials look for. No touchdowns, four interceptions coming into the game. He had a almost a four to one ratio the other way. USC's been the nemesis for Danny in the past. He's really struggling today. Third and seven. Pressure, DeMarco Farr. Flag goes down in the backfield. Iwaliko also took a look at him. Yeah, but see if O'Neill could have stepped up into the pocket here. Uh, well, he got, uh, maybe not. No, they had a good twist. I, I, Iwaliko yeah, was he coming stayed at home. Up, yeah. Demetrius Devers comes very close to getting another flag in almost the exact place. The official right on the right on the play does not throw the flag. Holding on the offense, decline, fourth down. Vino only 34 yards back. He's not counting on a big punch from Tommy Thompson. Playing the wind. Going too. into the wind, yeah. Short punt. He's got a shot. Trying to get that to opening gate. Oh my goodness, what a great tackle by Coda. He'd still be running. This week, Oregon has put a lot of their first teamers on the special teams. And Chad Cota is one of those guys. Ernest Jones was also in there. And 30, excuse me, Todd. 32 yard punt, 14 yard return on this. But it would have played by your pal Cota. Right. He takes care of the blocker, makes the tackle. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. There are a lot of guys this league that would not have made that play. right. <laughs> and that would have been a touchdown against some other teams. Coda, as I said earlier, the Pac-10 Player of the Week for his hard work against Arizona State last week. Down. Eric Bjornsson stays at quarterback. First and ten. Wise move when you've got the lead and you've got a banged up quarterback starter. Bjornsson showing some of the speed he's got to get away from Ernest Jones. I guess the point I was trying to make, this is really helpful for Eric because he had to go into that UCLA game so suddenly. It's such a critical time. It was really tough on him. And good pressure by UCLA. Bino carries down near the 30 yard. Line. Jerry May Asher been hurt at all coming into this game? No. Third down and three. Here's the pitch to Bino. Well played. And coming up very well was again Bino Jeff Bryan Sherman. Ball Sherman was the leading tackler in the first half with eight. He also makes a field goal attempt if they tear it. Now they're going to punt. Going to punt the ball from the 32 yard line. That'll be a 49 yard field goal with the wind at his back. This is basically not a vote of confidence. <laughs> Wardell trying to add to his collection of a half dozen inside the 10 to come to rest, but not this time. First and 10 for Danny O'Neill. He's got seven and a half minutes to go. Little and my goodness. 
Justin Thomas finally made a play that I it's a good job of shedding a block and just coming right upfield. Whittle was the man who impressed me more than any other duck in the game last year against Washington. I think Don hit on it uh, when Ricky Whittle just has not had the practice time consistently with an ankle injury. And he needs some guys don't need as much practice as other guys. And Ricky needs the practice time. Second and 13 after the loss of three. O'Neal now fighting for his life. As Thomas again brings him down. This time he brings the quarterback. Uh, play on the weak side, weak side linebacker. On the right side of the field. Ooh. And O'Neal is hauled down by Jamal Fontaine. Thompson back on his own six. Hang time has been outstanding today by Tommy. And Bino Bryant hoping to bust one. His last one, a 14 yard return. Lamar Lions close. Fair catch at the 46. Washington. Bjorkson still a quarterback going to Mark Bruner, his tight end. A little bit behind him as he was. Mark Bruner Got three of the five offensive line starters over three bills. Second down and ten, and they've blocked well today. There's the pass. Is that Crawlick? Well, I'll tell you, Joe, with a great catch. Isaac Walker with a solid hit. And Joe taking his share of hits this year. Joe takes them every day in practice. He does. He does. sweats. He'll go down there and he'll fall and run into the bench. And he'll, just, he'll concentrate on football. He wants to catch every ball that's thrown to him. And you see the arm strength of Eric Bjornsson and the tackling strength of Isaac Walker. Isaac's He's had a good game quite today. the hitter. He's had some licks. Good hit by Walker. It'll be third down and three. Everybody. Oh, good penetration. Yes, the blitz and Byron Rockwell again. Keeps the clock rolling. 415, 414. So lots of people coming, just lots of bodies. Matt Jones cuts Rockwell. The Rockwell's able to flip himself over enough, enough to get his legs in the play. This crowd's been pretty quiet today. Brown from his 11. Ernie Conwell forcing him to go inside. You Husky fans will want to tune in Thursday evening for the latest edition of Husky Profile. Much, much more. Isn't it amazing how they can preserve film now, those things that they can do to keep those films alive from way back when, Don James' first year? That's right. Sean Burwell carrying on the last play. Hank Galliaga got the tackle. They say one of the good things about him are his instincts. That he uh, is able to sniff out a play extremely well as a linebacker. Second and three. Then has the ability to get there once he smells it. <laughs> Hope that leg is healthy. Tate again. Actually, uh, the rain stopped pretty well once yeah, the game yeah. started. Tracks even almost dry. Thomas can't get him. Giving chase. Gets a couple of breaks. Still going. Uh, Steve Martin looked like he wanted to carry him to the goal line. I thought he was going to. Justin Thomas finally with a tackle. That was impressive. Very that impressive. There was a lot of, lot of purple guys that had a shot at Danny O'Neill. Not only escapes, but gets enough yardage for first down. Oregon continues in the hurry-up offense, but there's Mikey Willico, Cedric White. Three guys. David, David Ritchie, Ritchie yeah, Galliaga, some... Steve Springstead. Move on Springstead. Steve Harden beauty. tucks him under his arm, does a good job. Good quarterback leverage there. First and ten. Interception. As it goes to Russell Hairston, his second today. Well, when you're trying to make big plays, when you're down by two scores and less than three minutes to go in the ball game, sometimes you do things you wouldn't ordinarily do. Pro balls, places you probably shouldn't. And Russell Hairston feels good about number two today. Danny O'Neill has time to do what he wants to do but overthrew he, he either overthrew Ricketts or underthrew Macklemore I'm not sure which yeah you, you don't want to no guesswork on flat passes no. you know you're either there or you're not you you might work down the field in the deep routes but the, or not in the flat Graziani the backup quarterback we may see him here in the last few minutes we'll wait and find out First and ten, Huskies still throwing the ball as McCarthy gets his first reception today. DJ, who had the touchdown catch against UCLA. Second down and four. Leon Neal gets a carry as the flag drops on the line. That's with 2.23 to go. Look at that little Inside on the defense. First down. First and ten, Yordson. 
Looking to pass all the way. Oh, and a near catch anyway by Janowski. He has yes. excellent hands for a young receiver. Second down and ten. Jordson, they give him time as they roll out. Not enough time. Now he's got a lot of room. Looks for a block. Gets away from one man. The blocker, a flag rather, back in the backfield of all places. Ryan Collins on the tackle, but it's a clip on the dog. Two, two things about this clip. One, it must have been really late, and one, it must have been well off the ball because the flags came down well, and it must have been very obvious as well. Flag thrown way over here when Eric Bjornsson is way over there. You see the clip right, right there on 56. That's what they're going to call because that's Gallagher's, where the flags ended up. Pete Gallagher's getting a chance. This is tough on offensive linemen. Oh, yeah. You don't know where the quarterback is. Defensive guys can see him. Yeah. And Leif Johnson is the fullback. There's the pitch to Neal. Gets a lead block by Leif Johnson. Tries to stay in bounds and is absolutely tattooed. Leon Neal, the ball carrier. As Leon Neal carried. And we think it was Collins with a hit. Yes, Brian Collins, the strong safety out of Los Angeles. Rich Brooks anywhere near that. <laughs> yeah. The checkoff by Eric Bjornsson gets the ball. A great block by Leif Johnson. Then an accidental block like Leif Johnson. Oh, oh look at all those guys on the sidelines. And then be on your toes. That looks like bowling alley number seven down at the uh, First Street in Maine. Leon Neal at the tie bowl. Oh, the penalty, the clipping penalty. That's why it's still third and 13 after the long run. Wrapped up from behind, yes. Where's the ball? Play, the ball, I can't find on. it, yeah. Banderson is the one who got in there and caused fits for Bjornsson. And all of a sudden, there was no football. And it'll be Oregon ball here with a minute and a half to go. Good effort by Banderson. He spun out. There it is. And got around him, and uh, Bjornsson lost, and then nobody can find it. Well, nobody Look even at that. laid there for. Nobody even knows there's no a host to find it. And then everybody saw it. Minute and 30 to go. 21 to 6 on a late Sunday night. As you watch this broadcast, or Monday night with Oregon's broadcast, Willie Tate with a reception, and he's stopped by Incaliaga up at the 45 yard line. Back where O'Neill passed. Roughing the passer on the defense. Tack on 15 yards. Automatic first down. Or a bad one? Well, they just made a bad one, but it was full speed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, full speed, that's right. First and 10, trying to set up a screen. Here's Burwell. Gets a couple of good blocks inside the 30, and Josh Ask Moore is there. Along with Aliaga. See some more familiar numbers. O'Neill. Fumbles and fumbles out of bounds as Scott Greenlock came up with a pick. Second down and three. Burwell trying to get the first, and in the meantime, the clock keeps going. Huskies in no hurry to get off the pile. Oregon calls their final timeout with 53 seconds to go. Third down and one for Oregon. Two receivers to the left with Ricketts to the right. Looks to the right, intercepted. Was that Aliaga? Uh, JJ Frank. Okay, JJ got it. Just coming in, Hanson, rather. That must have been what Lambright told him in the huddle over there. Let's tip it and get an interception. <laughs> Go for A the record. Richard freshman from Kent and Kentwood High School. And that's a mighty big pick. That will go down as an interception. Oh, sure. Yeah, Danny's got to throw it, and it was tipped. It's, uh, but J.J. Hansen uh, did an excellent job uh, hanging on to the football. It's a big one. Six feet and 225. And that's about all you can do at this point is say, let's get on to the next week. First and 10, and they'll try to eat up the clock now. As Ted Starks at quarterback. Leif Johnson, the ball carrier. And Leif Johnson carrying. And that is Leif's first rush of the year. Technically, he hasn't carried the ball. Leif Johnson <laughs> again Leif Johnson Collins comes in to leave his mark, and the game is over. And Jim Lambright's Washington Huskies are at five and two, coming back after the loss to UCLA to get an impressive win over Oregon, the team with the number one total offense in the conference, and doing very well at limiting it to. 
294 yards, 96 rushing, 198 passing, 399 total yards for Lambright's offense. Big win for for Jim. Uh, uh, you play uh, the, the Northwest rival games. Uh, they're just starting to get that series going, and uh, of course Jim's been involved in these 20 plus years. He knows he knows uh, the meeting, and uh, their big games are important games. And uh, this is a big win for for Jim and the Huskies. And they're never easy games. Thank you.